It is official. Sanders has graduated from driver's training. We just got his permit. He aced the test. So he went to the Secretary of State this morning to get his <laughs> to get his permit and uh, yeah, he's gonna drive home from here. Great. And she's excited. No, I am not. <laughs> his first time driving legally with me yeah. so now he's got to start logging all of his hours and he's got to drive 40 daylight hours and 10 nighttime hours so he's got to do all that and um yeah we will see you when we get home so one minute you're seeing us and our farm and it is rainy, it is very muddy, and now the next minute you see us, it's dry and sunny and it's almost a little bit hot. Today it was actually quite hot in the greenhouse. I've been working in here just a little bit. Got some of my plants in here, hoping it doesn't catch up with me. I know we're only middle of April. We still have about a month of, um, potential freezing. Our last frost date is usually about May 10 here in Michigan. And so hopefully I'm not jumping the gun at bringing some of these plants, but a lot of these are cold hardy plants and they can handle it. Anyway, uh, that's not why I actually am here. I'm going to show you what Ethan's doing. He's starting to move some topsoil out of the way. We're going to where we are going to be building our new hay barn. He's eager to try out the new side um, side disc. Is it called a side disc? I don't know. I always get that one. I always get that mixed up. Maybe it's an offset disc. Offset disc. That's what it is. Um, so he's eager to give that a try. And um, he's going to um, work up a little bit of the soil. Abby, his wife, she wants some soil for her garden beds. So he is actually moving it to do to get her some soil, I believe. So I'm gonna take you out there, but it's windy out there, so that's why I'm actually in here videoing it. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't hear me. He kind of went over my uh, garden area, which is right in here. I have all of this for garden, but I wanted to make it a no-till garden, but he just tilled it. So. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what to do just yet. So, I don't know exactly where we left off on the tank. Um, it's our uh, newest bulk tank. Yes. I don't know like what exactly we told and didn't tell. Um, so it's been, we put it into service like last September. Um, Has it been that long? Well, we got it hooked up. It took, <laughs> we put it in in like May. Yeah. Um, it took two to three months to get a tech out to hook it up. Yeah, and then um, inspection took a yeah. while. So after that, we got it inspected, and I think we started using it in November. Yeah, that could Somewhere be. there. Yeah. Um, but long story short, it's been solid. We've had one issue, and that is you've got two chilling units. This is a two, was it 2,000? Two two thousand gallon unit right yes two thousand okay. two thousand gallon unit it has two coolers two ch yeah um and they there's two plates on the bottom of the tank there's a plate that's right here at the freon runs through and then there's a plate right here and they're split and there's two sets of lines uh um 
um, supply and return for both of those cooling units. Um, one side has been really good. We haven't had issues with the other side. We pumped it full of nitrogen to leak test it and it leaked out within like a day. So it had a major hole. Um, Cause you'd put in like 10 pounds of nitrogen and I guess it'd be physical pounds of nitrogen. Um, and you pump it up to 100 PSI or whatever and a day later it'd be empty. So um, we didn't, it's been so running. that's a major leak. Yes. That's a major leak. Yes. Um, we've been running it on one cooler for the last, over the winter. All and winter. it's it's been doing all right. It's not the fastest, but it's it gets it down quick enough that it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, but now that, like today, it's the middle of April and we're hitting some record temperatures. It's like, what, 85 out right now? Yeah. Um, it's not cutting it, <laughs> so. No. So we, not many people actually know how to fix these. So in our part, kind of where we are, there's like two people that really specialize. There's more people around, but there's two people that really specialize in doing this as Bulk like their tanks. main thing. Yes. Um, and we, so we, what did we do? We contacted, we contacted the guy, him in like, the technician. In, oh goodness. Yeah, we contacted him in like, January. I think January, yep, like right after Christmas, and he finally was able to get out here yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so. Busy uh, guy. Yes, he's. He doesn't just do this. He replaces compressors. He hooks them tanks up. He, uh, he does it all. Yep. Yeah, he'll, he'll seal them. He'll get them ready for shipping. He'll do whatever you need, new installs. But he finally able was able to get out here yesterday. So. Um, yeah. So, so he pretty much fix the yep, problem there was so the, the whole issue was uh, so we he came here he pumped it up to 100 psi of nitrogen um, and he got in there with he's got a little like sonic leak detector thing uh, which kind of neat little gizmo yeah, but he I got in there video of it or anything and within Sorry. like five minutes he had the leak pinpointed so um, it actually mm -hmm. ended up being right here so he uh, he's got it all welded up and did a nice he job with it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he cut a hole out here, um, and one of the they take from what I understand they take two sheets of stainless, um, they weld tack weld them like every inch apart, um, and then they put like fifteen hundred pounds of psi to blow them apart, mm -hmm. and that's the uh, the chamber that the freon flows through. Um, but where where are those? Weld. welds are um it like creates like a almost like like a bubble wrap look of sorts not it's not as extreme as bubble wrap but um you'll see kind of bubbling and then there's a weld every square inch or so well where that pressure was put around that weld it, it weakens the steel and in this case there was a little pit that had ru actually rusted through right next to one of them one of the welds and I don't know why it rusted, if there was like a reaction with the foam in the tank. There's like, there's this much foam yeah. in between this outer layer. It's like a spray so foam. Four this inches. Actually, like. Yeah, there's a piece of it, but it's four inches deep. Yeah, it's, it's thick. So I don't know if it's like a reaction between some moisture that got in there in the foam, with the foam Somehow, or whatever, yeah. but there was a little rust hole and it had rusted through and it was just leaking air right, yeah. right out. So. So he got in there, he cut it open, he welded that, or polished it up, welded it. Um, he had that done probably within like an hour. <laughs> it was yeah. really quick. Um, so, yeah, I was helping him out a little bit. We replaced a uh, fitting here. So this one actually looked like this. Um, it had a coupler here, uh, but this Schrader valve was busted. Like it was really mangled and the cap is what kept it from leaking. So this had the exact same setup so we just took it out and put a short piece there um yeah and i we had to hook the uh the wow my brain what we had to hook the cooler up on the inside so i was helping them with that too and they pressure tested it uh yesterday afternoon and then all night it's been running on a vacuum pump pulling a vacuum on the tank um, and it's still running right now, but 
Theoretically, it's down to ideally you want like 100 microns. I don't have a micron meter. I know the vacuum pump does like gets down to like 50 microns. So he's like, we'll just run it for a day, and it wasn't leaking, so it hasn't. Yeah, it hasn't had a problem with it. So we're gonna put free on it and see what it does. So. And it's been sitting empty for the last day. We haven't used it. He yep. came on the day that we didn't need it, mm -hmm. and we need it tonight. Yeah. So. Yep. We're gonna get. <laughs> we gotta get free on yep. in it, and. Yep. Yeah, it should should work again. And people will ask, like, it being outside, is the heat gonna warm the tank, or when it's cold outside, does it freeze the milk inside? Or? So, it's insulated really well, and they're designed to be outside. It does, I do notice like on a day like today, when two days ago when we had it full, that it was running, it was cycling a little bit more. Um, and I think a lot of that's because the thermostat's in this back wall and oh. so close to the. Oh, outside. But we also noticed if it's really cold out that it also reads a little bit cold. Mm -hmm. And then when the tank would get agitated, it would bring the temperature back up. Okay. And same on these hot days. Yeah. So, the milk itself is really well insulated. Um, time's so there's tell, no issues no. with milk getting too warm or no. too cold. It's designed to be bulkheaded like this. And yeah. Just, the, the whole tank's really designed to be, live outside. So um, there's a lot. I, uh, the tech was really impressed, even with how much insulation. He's like, wow, this is thick. Wow, that's but, good. Um, yeah, they're designed to be bulkheaded like this. So All yeah, right. we'll go Let's inside. Go inside. So I have our monstrosity here. Um, this is the vacuum pump he's letting us borrow it. Uh, mine does not pull down as good of a vacuum as his. So uh, yeah, we're borrowing his. It's, it's been running on the tank since like five o'clock last night. Yeah, almost 24 hours. Uh -huh. So. So we're gonna call it good. I don't have a micrometer. I'm gonna throw yeah. my set of gauges on it. I mean. I can hear it's not sucking any more air out. Yeah. Um, but if I had a micrometer, I'd put it on it and check what it's at. That would tell us if anything else is weird. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to shut these valves here. I don't know what these are called. He had a term for it. Oh, really? Yeah. This is his wrench. Uh, so I gotta screw it out. That's closed. So, in, open. Out close. Uh, and then this is the high pressure side, and this one's quarter inch. Just screw that out. So Sydney was here the whole time the technician was here, mm -hmm. pretty much. So you pretty much learned a lot, and yeah, I did, and and got a good education from him. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Intrigues me. I wouldn't want to do it for a living, but no. <laughs> um, yeah, the tone never changed, so that's good. Yeah. Well, you want to go ahead and unplug it? Okay. Beautiful. So I have a can of, this is an R22 system. Um, we really can't get R22. You can, but no, there's no new R22 being made. Made, or yeah, made, so to speak. Process? That's quite how it's How does that but, work? Um, R427 is the replacement for it. So I have a can of 427 here. It's got um, 11 pounds in it or so. Um, it says 16 because the can weighs oh, about yeah. five and a half. Um, so we're gonna pump in. It took 10 pounds to bring this up to where it needed to be. And I'm gonna pump 10 into this. We don't have milk in the tank, so I can't like, gauge too well where pressures are going to be. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put 10 in it. I know that's a safe number. Yeah. And then if we need to put a little bit more in it, uh, we'll have to get our tank. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead and unhook these lines. Welcome back. <laughs> so I've got my gauges on this unit. Uh, the low pressure side port is here. Um, so I'm going to hook my low pressure line up to that. It's snug, hopefully it don't leak. If it does, we have to tighten down one. And then my high pressure is on this guy. Alright. 
tip that upside down. Zero. The oh, line's been a little bit away done. Yep. The so, boss king. Oh dear, now I'm in trouble. The boss? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna open this valve up and then we're gonna um, start putting Freon in it. So it'll suck it in. Yep. Well, so we turn it on. Figure out what wrench I've got. He's got eight wrenches here. Gotta go in. Okay. We're at negative 30, so. Well, we're past negative 30, but. So I don't have a gauge that reads microns. So. All right, here we go. Stuck in her head. Yeah, we'll, we'll start it up here in a second. We'll yeah. watch your tail go down. Oh my god. Open up my high pressure side so I can look at it. Figure out what side. You want to open it yet or wait? Just go look at it. Not open this. Okay. So I got pressure. So I have the top compressor on, the bottom one's off. And if you want to kick it up. You want uh, just all unit? The bottom one's turned off here. Uh -huh. So I now this will... Again. I did. You did. Oh. What did I do? There we go. Oh, that's a delayed start. Oh, one's out of place. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we milked, it's now the next day. Um, we milked last night's milking of the tank and we milked this morning's milk of the tank. So it's uh, a little bit over half full, um, but it, has completed its cooling in eight hours versus, well, it depends. With the water cooler, we were running 10 to 11, um, but it also was not 80, 85 degrees out too, so. Yeah. Yeah, it did a really good job. Um, cooling last night, it, yeah. it did, it was really hot. Night, yeah. yeah. Uh, we cooled down really nice, and outside, and it liked that. Um, but today it kept up really well, so. This morning? Yeah. yeah. On a day like today, it would struggle to. It'd probably cool still be milk. running. Yeah, it definitely would be to keep the milk. I mean, you're putting 52 degree milk into the tank um, and it's trying to cool it as it's coming in, but it, yeah, it can't keep up with it. So it did a really good job. It only ran for like half an hour after we're done milking, so. That's good, yeah, impressive. That's in, yeah. So, yay! I don't know what else work. to say. So, <laughs> have to button it up. And so it's at 37 degrees. Cool. The milk is at, and that's about where we store it. Yeah. Uh, 37, 38. Yeah. So that's what it's at. It'll turn off at 37, and then it kind of fluctuates. Yeah. So throughout the day, it'll turn on and off, and yep. it agitates. And so it'll just stir the tank, um, and that's where like you'll have the last the little bit on the back of the tank that'll so get a little bit warmer, and then it'll kick the tank on, and it'll agitate for a little bit, and rise. It's not that warm, and it'll bring the yeah. water back down. So um, it'll save a little electricity. Yeah. Well, I don't know that, but oh, it'll get the milk colder quicker. Which quicker. Is that's what it is. Yep. Probably not electricity because you're running twice Too as low. much yep. and I don't know. Can see, wait and see. Um, yeah. So. All right. Thanks for sharing with us. Mm -hmm.